Hi, hope you're well and getting to play lots of golf. I've recently had a few requests uh, from people talking about the hands in the golf swing and are they important? Well, my simple reply to that is yes, they're incredibly important. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you a little bit more why. So just imagine if you were holding the golf club and your hands were freezing cold or if they were soaking wet, what control were you going to have over that club face? Probably very little. So there's an awful lot of information out there telling you about how the body is controlling the golf club and controlling the golf swing. But I know for a fact that the hands are super important. That's because it's your only link with the golf club. Therefore, they have to start to control your club face. So... A simple thing that we can all do, and it's vital that we do this with all the golf clubs in your bag, is when your club was designed in the factory, it was designed nice and straight. It wasn't designed with angles, too many angles one way or the too many open or closed club faces. So your golf club was actually designed perfectly. So why don't we use that design when we're making a golf swing? So when we set up to the golf ball, your club can be nice and straight don't need to have the hands leaning forward too much. There's an awful lot of chat at the moment about you have to have this forward shaft lean. But in my experience, what happens, most people uh, who don't get out to practice it very often, often lead with their hands, leave the club face way open and start hitting the ball uh, off to the right if you're right on the golf, hitting it out of the corner of the club and start shanking it. So you have to be very careful. You've got to, match, if you're going to have this forward shaft lean, you've got to match it up with really good body movement. Um, so we're not all blessed with great body movement, so I just want to show you a simple thing that you can do to get good at squaring this club face up. Simple thing to do, so we're gonna stand up nice and tall, so my back straight, my body straight. We know we don't hit golf shots like this, because very rare would we have a golf ball this high, but what it does do is it gives you an opportunity to really see the club face. So at this point now, my club face is pointing correct. So all I'm going to do is turn to the top of my backswing and as I'm doing that my wrists are nicely setting. So they're actually, it's a throwing action but I'm doing it on the side angle from here. Now what we're going to do is bring it back to where it was and stop. And is that club face nice and square? That's what we're looking for. So we're turning, release. Now I'm back to square. So if I turn and start to lean the shaft as so many people are talking about, it's really easy for a lot of golfers to hit that golf ball with an open club face and then it's going miles off line because we might have the shaft leaning but we don't have that ability to square the club face up because we're not practicing all hours God said. So hold it up here first, turn, bring it back, is it nice and square? Now what you're looking for when you're doing that is what is the feeling that you're getting through the hands, wrists, shoulders it's actually bringing that back to square. I know when I do it wrong, I feel like I'm too much left hand dominant. So that's gonna leave my club face wide open. I want the sensation that my right hand's involved and that's bringing it back to square. So my right hand is actually helping release the club face rather than my left hand dragging the club through and leaving the club face wide open. Now in an ideal world, what we're looking for is both hands are working together. I say together, they're actually equal and opposite force in reaction. They're working against each other, which gives us that stability. But what we're looking to achieve is to bring this back nice and square. Then once we've done that, the body's turning, so I'm not now going to rotate my forearms, which would be a disaster. I was helping somebody the other day and he was saying that he was taught initially just to do this with his hands and arms. I mean, that's a terrible way of doing it because all you're going to do is close your club base too much. So once we've released the club, so we've set it, we've released it, the body and arms are all moving together and then it's released back over your shoulder. So I'm not going to stop my body and flick my hands. I'll do that slowly. This would be incorrect because now I'm going to hit it with a closed club face. So if I just do a little tap, just there, release, and it just pops it nice and straight. But you see now how I've matched, in, matched this up with my with body movement. I haven't stopped my body and just flicked the club past.
past it because that's now going to close it and you'll hit some awful shots if you do that. So if I now just do that with driver, just doing exactly the same thing, turning, bring it back to, is it nice and square? Am I pulling too much with my top hand or is my bottom hand too much involved in that shutting the club face down? I'm looking for that lovely neutral club face. So I've just found it very easy to do it here first. Then start to lower the club towards the ground. And again, you can stop it in fact. So I wouldn't do this with a lot of force because I don't want you hurting yourself. But it's really important that you start to learn to release that club face back to square. Don't hold it too much as we see a lot of golfers do and try not to release it too early with your bottom hand. Otherwise you're gonna close the club face and it's not offline. So nice and simple to do. The more you practice, People say the better you get, the more permanent you get. So you might as well practice something that's going to be beneficial as opposed to practicing a fault. So nice and simple thing to work on. But if you've got control of your club face, you're going to have control over your golf ball, which is massively beneficial, as we all know. Now, remember, Christmas is fast approaching. If you're looking for that special gift, why don't you come and see me? Why don't you come and see me for a one-to-one -one lesson or join me on a one or a two-day golf course or even come on one of our coaching holidays? Uh, or why not become a member of Hopper Golfing? So on there, we'll definitely be able to help you improve your golf game and take it to a level you never thought existed. But may I take this opportunity to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And remember, always here to help you with your golfing issues. Take care and look after yourselves. Bye.